Uh, today we're going to cover some more JavaScript examples, uh, and uh, depending on the time, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll actually start out with this. I was going to say depending on the time, I'll, I'll see if there's any questions, but I might as well start out with this because probably answering your questions is more important than seeing uh, a few new JavaScript examples. So do you have any questions either about your project or about the JavaScript examples we've seen so far? Yes? Um, for the project, can you go over um, the flow positioning again? Oh, sure. I'll be glad to. Um, do you mean float or do you mean the flow? Uh, float? The one that makes it look good on a phone. Okay, the one that makes it look good on a phone. Okay, the float one. Sure, I'll be glad to go over that again. Um, so let's uh, let, let's let's talk about that. All right. The idea of a float is that it will the page will conform itself to the size of the screen. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start out with one of these pages just so I can save a little bit of typing. The idea of a float is like this. It's to check to see if there's enough space to put the things side by side. If there's enough things to put, if there's enough space to put them side by side, it will. Otherwise, it will drop it down to the to the line below. So I'm going to start out with two sections. And again, in this example, I'm using two sections, but it doesn't have to be two sections. These could be anything. These could be any block tag. So they could be navs or headers or sections or articles or divs or paragraphs or, or anything like that. All right? So although I'm doing it with sections, again, this doesn't just apply to sections. So um, if you don't specify any style, uh, the mode is called the, the flow, all right, where it simply stacks things in a flow going right down the line and block tags it stacks on top of each other, like blocks, all right. I'm going to go and put a border around this so we see exactly how big these things are. So style. So I'm going to put a border on the section. Here's our two sections. All right, one on top of each other. All right, and this is in the flow model. All right, I'm going to talk about the flow model first so that we can build into the flow. All right, so I'm just going to spend a minute talking about it. And then we can do things like putting margins and padding and stuff like that on here. So I'm going to go and do that as well. So I'm going to put a margin of Ten pixels, let's say, and a padding of five pixels. And now we have that. All right, so there's ten pixels between them, and there's five pixel space um, 
minimum between the, the border and where the content begins. All right, I can also give widths to these things. All right, so I can give a width of Let's start out by giving a width of 400 pixels, and then we'll play with that. All right, now, a width of 400 pixels, um, this might look good on a phone, all right? I'm gonna find something to put in for a mobile, the viewport. And this would look real good on a mobile phone. All right, let's go and run the mobile emulator. Um, developer tools. I can choose the view, and I can pick a Galaxy 5, let's say. Or let's pick, let's pick a different device. A Nexus 5. Uh, iPhone 5, wow, these are working too well. iPhone, iPhone, let's do an iPhone 6 Plus. Actually, let me, instead of doing that, let me change it to be a width of 300 pixels. So now, this will look good. That's how it would look on an iPhone 6 Plus. And this is how it would look like on a Galaxy um, S5 and so on. So that looks pretty good, right? I mean, it's plain, but it, it looks readable. Now that's okay, but if we were to view this on a desktop device like this, we have a whole lot of wasted space over here, right? Where there's nothing there, all right? So what can we do to fix that, all right? Well, we want the best of both worlds, right? We want it to be like it is now if it's on a phone, but it would be nice if we had two columns and we didn't waste quite so much space for a desktop device, all right? So one thing I can do is I can float these things. And I'm gonna say float to the left. And here's what this means, float to the left. I'm going to put the first one up there, and I'm going to push it to the left, taking into account the margins and all that. The browser will then look to see the next one is also floated to the left. It will see if there is space alongside of the thing to its left. And either there is or there isn't. If there's sufficient space to put the next thing in, then it will put it right alongside of it. If there's not sufficient space on the window, it will drop it below. So that's sometimes called responsive web design. Sometimes they call pages like this liquid pages because they sort of reshape themselves based on the size of the window or the size of the container. So by putting in the float left now, if I view this in a desktop browser, those things are side by side. All right. So I'm not really wasting as much space as I used to be. All right, they're side by side and I can see them. However, if I go to a mobile device, they're still stacked on top of each other. So it's sort of the best of the both world. It's responsive. The page responds to the different size window that it's in, all right? And it's simply by calculating flow. Now, I realize that this is a real simple example. There's just two things on the page, all right? And uh, it gets a lot more confusing when you start having 
a bunch of stuff on the page, and it also gets confusing when you start mixing percentages with um, absolute pixel numbers, and when you start throwing minimum widths and things like that. So let's try to build on this a little bit. All right. Um, one thing to keep in mind is when you're looking at the width of these things, the width of these are comprised of the sum of the width plus the padding. And remember, the padding's on both sides, the right and the left. So this would be 310 pixels plus 20. That would be 330 plus 2. That would be 332 pixels wide. 332. I, yeah, I, yeah, that's correct. All right, so the width is at 300. It's the, the real width, the real total amount of space that it takes up is the sum of the margin and the padding and the border and so on. Um, let's imagine if we had a, 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 a header going across the top of the page now. All right, let's put a header on here. And this is going to look ugly. I say that so you don't think that I'm losing it the last day of class here. All right. percentage to this and say a width of 95%. Usually I do a little bit less than 100 simply because the border adds on to it. And then this will resize as the page gets bigger or smaller because it's a percentage. Normally though, um, if I use a, uh, a float on one thing, I'll use a float on everything. I've run into trouble when I have not done that. So I'll go and do a float left on this. And again, it looks the same, but um, seems to be less potential for trouble if I float everything. Did you have any more questions? I could use float for something. Actually, a student in one of my other classes was, was asking me about this. Uh, I'll, I'll, add, I'll add an example here. What if I wanted a, a caption alongside a picture? All right. 
So let me go and find a picture. I know I have a picture in one of these. two pictures. so I don't destroy the original. image Okay, so I have an image with a caption for both of these. Now let's view how this looks, and this is without any styling. Oh, I saved it as float. Okay, so this is the original, and this is the new one. Okay. The way this is now, I have a caption, and I have a picture, a caption, a picture, and a caption. What if I wanted these things to be a picture and a caption right alongside of it? And then maybe I want another picture and a caption alongside of it. We can accomplish that with floating as well. Okay? So, I'm going to go in and keep in mind there's a whole bunch of ways I can do this, but this is the way that I'm going to today. All right. I'm going to put each picture caption combination in a section with a certain class. And I'm going to call it picture. I'm going to try to do this piece by piece, and again, because I want to show you, I want to build up to the floating part of it. So I'm going 
going to put a style for everything that has a class of picture. And I'm going to give it a width. of three hundred pixels. Maybe. All right. So I do that. View the page. All right. It made them smaller. Let's let's make that smaller still. Let's say two hundred pixels and let's put a border around it. So there's my two pictures, and the picture is a, a each picture block is a picture with a caption on it. All right, now how do I make it so that the caption is alongside of it? Well, whenever, whenever you're thinking of like I want these things alongside of each other, you can think of floating, right? So I can say every image within a picture class. I want to float to the left. And every paragraph within something that has a class of picture, I also want to float to the left. That does absolutely nothing. All right. change the selector a little bit to say that any picture, any image within, any paragraph with an ID of picture or any image within the ID of picture, or that should be gallery. Floating only works on a block tag, and images aren't blocks. So I had to say that uh, an image inside the picture class was a, um, a block tag. All right. So that's another way that you can use floating. Use floating anytime you want to put things side by side. And it puts things side by side provided there's enough space. So, for example, if there was not enough space to put the paragraph alongside the picture, then it would drop it down below. Did that answer your question? I have a feeling I got off on a little bit of a tangent. No, it did. Um, so is that ID gallery still 
I don't, I don't really need the idea gallery anymore. And just out of curiosity, you have section, and then you have section class, and then you have closed off section. Uh -huh. But then you have section class and a closed off section. Do you need another regular like, plain section in between those two? Do I, do I need another what? Because you have a section uh -huh. header just by itself, just section. Uh -huh. And underneath you have a section class. Uh -huh. And then it closes. Uh -huh. But for the second one, it just starts with section class. Oh, do I need, no, no, I don't need that. In other words, what this is saying is this whole section of the page is like my gallery. All right? And then each gallery kind of has two, has, has a bunch of subsections in it. So the section of the page is a gallery. And that's going to be all my images. Oh, it's closed off at the bottom. Yeah, it's closed off down to the bottom. That. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? All right. Let's look at the JavaScript examples that we were going over last time. I, I honestly don't remember how far we got on the one. Um, so let's see. These, by the way, are actually my daughter's rabbits. So this is a real life example. Did you still need that that picture P or is that that's gone? You don't need that. Um, I don't know, maybe I do. I took it out. Let's see. Because right now it's can get to be confusing. There we go. That's what I wanted. Again, the problem was I wasn't floating the picture class. I was floating the stuff inside of it, and it got to be a mess. But I think that's what I want. So, yeah, that's, that's what I need. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead now. All right, let's look at some of the other JavaScript examples. And again, I don't remember exactly. I think we had just started talking about this one. If we click on that. And again, these could be links. I don't have them for, as links in this example. But if you look at it, I simply have one big unordered list. Inside each list item is sort of a sub unordered list. And if you think about that, like menus, that's how a lot of menus are, right? You know, the ESPN menu. It's fun going to the ESPN site when the Cavs win, so let's go there today. Actually, I don't have to go to ESPN. I can stay on LC's site. These are all, these all could be in an ordered list, an unordered list. Each submenu underneath it is sort of a sub. Resources. These things are under getting started. These things are under programs and careers. So I have a main list, and then I have each list item, each of these would be a list item, and they contain a sublist. 
And that's exactly what I have here. The only difference is it's oriented vertically instead of horizontally. All right. I have an on click. Uh, I call a function that says handle submenu. Now the reason for the function again is that I have, if I didn't do it with a function, I'd have a lot of duplicated code. Because essentially for every menu item, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing it to a different section of the page. All right. So in this case, I say, all right, if I click on this, then I want to do something to submenu one. If I click on this, I want to do something to submenu two, and so on. Submenu three, submenu four. So I'm calling that function to handle the submenu, and I'm telling it which submenu I want to handle. If I click item three, I want to handle subitem three, and so on. Let's see what this function does. I pass in the ID of the thing that I want to change. I have an if statement that looks to see if the display is blocked. The display of block means that it's visible. So if it's visible, I want to hide it. So if it's visible, I set the display value to none. And then I, I set this arg ID marker, in other words, submenu 1 marker, submenu 2 marker, I change it to a plus. The plus indicating that there's more here, you can expand it if you want to. If it's not visible, then I show it. And I show it by changing the style to block. And I then change uh, the marker to a minus sign. All right. This shows how really with relatively little JavaScript, you can do some really cool stuff. All right. Uh, for example, this isn't that far different than the hide and show spoiler. All right. Same sort of logic, except I have code in there that looks to see, well, if it's hidden, show it. If it's shown, hide it. All right? And that's accomplished with an if statement. The if statement um, looks at a certain condition, sees if it's true or false. If it's true, it does the first part of the if statement. If it's false, it does the second part. Those of you that have done like Visual Basic, or not Visual Basic, well, you might have done Visual Basic you know, a while ago. But those of you that have done C Sharp or Java or any other kind of programming, it's the same sort of if statement. All right? It's a conditional. Sometimes you do one thing, sometimes you do something else. All right? So other than that conditional, it's virtually the same as the show and hide spoiler bit. The only difference is instead of just showing or hiding a span, we're showing and hiding a whole list of items. And again, these could all be links if you wanted them to be. All right? So I could make this a link to page one, a link to page two, a link to page three, and then all of a sudden I'd have a navigation. All right? Just for laughs, I'll put in, just to demonstrate what I mean, I'll put in sort of dummy links, links to go to the top of the page, just so you get a sense of what it would look like if it was navigation. just do it to this first one. And I have these links. Now I could do the effect of uh, making the links by doing a hover effect. Right? So I could say, a text, text decoration none. I'll get rid of the underline. And then I can say a colon hover. background 
blue. the first time because if I made them links I'd have to turn off for the assignment I yeah. moved something around so right it was just exactly. on the plus I can't exactly what yeah did, but yeah uh, yeah but that's why I didn't make them links in the first place you run into a little problem of like how do you click on it to close it when you're clicking on a link all right actually the way that you would do that is if you clicked on the plus it would close it without going to the link. But that's a little obscure for a user to know to do that. So you'd have to make a little adjustments if you wanted to get that working. But again, I just wanted to demonstrate sort of uh, um, how you would do that. All right, the other thing, uh, um, and again, this, this takes advantage of the same thing. Um, you'll see that, that a lot of times with complicated JavaScript, it's really just a bunch of simple JavaScript. I mean, we learned the first day we talked about JavaScript, how to show and hide things. All this is doing is it's doing a show and hide. Uh, sometimes it does a show, sometimes it does a hide. And it has an if statement that controls that. And it also changes this little thing from a minus to a plus. And it does that by setting the inner HTML property. So you can actually write HTML to your page. The other example we went over last time, or that, that I, I think I, we looked at briefly, but we didn't go over, is the same sort of thing as this, except this actually should be wider. except it pulls up the menu underneath it. I only have the first part really working. This I have a little bit of an issue with, and this I have a little bit of an issue with. So we'll look at the first part of the example. Virtually the same thing. The difference being is that I have a, uh, a show submenu um, and a hide submenu function. So I do it in two functions instead of one. All right, it's just as well. Uh, and it's based on an on mouse over or on mouse out. Now, on mouse over simply shows the submenu, on mouse out simply hides it. Now, what the reason that this isn't working is because the CSS is not set up correctly to allow the submenus to pop up in the location that they should. So the submenus pop up where they should for the first submenu, but not really for the second and the third. And that's what causes the problem. So you'd have to play with the CSS to get that to work correctly. And again, you can do that simply by changing the position attribute and doing all sorts of things like that. So not a, not a huge deal uh, to fix this, uh, but it would require a little bit of work uh, to get this one going completely. Uh, the really reason I wanted to show this wasn't to have a completed uh, example, but just to show you that I can trigger things based on the on mouse over and on mouse out instead of just the on click. All right, and I can have it oriented horizontally instead of vertically. All those things are an aspect of the CSS. Remember when you're doing JavaScript, you have, JavaScript is controlling the behavior. The layout of the page and the layout of the elements is controlled by the CSS, and the specific content is controlled by the HTML. Let's look at some of these other examples that I have here. 
I actually have three examples. This is changing based on the on mouse over, on mouse out. If we look at this code. In this example, I have two different images. And I have two different versions of each image. I have the thumbnail and I have the full version. Um, if you remember the example, the first example I gave with the zoo animals, the lions and the orangutans, I only had one image for each image and I simply controlled the size of it via the, um, uh, the, the size attribute, the width attribute in CSS. This is a different way to do it, all right, where I show just the thumbnails. This would probably be a more effective way if I had a whole bunch of thumbnails because a whole bunch of big images is going to add up or a whole bunch of thumbnails is going to be that big. I then have uh, an on mouse over display Flemish giant, an on mouse out, or on mouse over on the first one display Flemish giant. I don't have an on mouse out, so wherever the mouse last was is the image it's going to display. And then I have an on mouse over display dwarf rabbit. And in this case, I change a bunch of things. I change the source of the image at uh, attribute, so the big image. I change the source attribute to Flemish JPEG. I change the, the um, title of it, the inner HTML pick title. That's this H1. I change it to Flemish Giant or Dwarf Rabbit, depending on which one I have the mouse over. And then I even played around with the style of the title. Just more as a demonstration um, that you can change whatever you want to uh, about the page. Uh, we've gone over a few examples. We've made a lot of things visible and invisible, but really you can change really whatever you want uh, simply by addressing the attribute in this way. If it's about the style, you say style, and then you have the attribute. If there's a dash in the attribute, like there's a dash in background color, then you don't use the dash. You simply make the second word capitalize. So that's why this one, as I put my mouse over the different rabbits, notice it changes the border as well. Now again, this is for demonstration. Would you actually want to do that? You could. All right. You could change the look of the header if you wanted to. But it should, be, it should be in a way that made sense. I mean, I sort of just change it in an arbitrary way just to, to arbitrarily show you that you can change it. But, you know, if you were looking at different things, if you had the calves and the Indians on your page, you could maybe make the background image for the, for the uh, Indians header the Indians logo. For the calves page, you could make it the calves logo and so on. So you could do it in a purposeful way. Uh, as opposed to what I'm doing here, which is basically just sort of playing around and, and changing it just to demonstrate that you can change it. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, this is, this is a little bit better example of the menu. And it works about the same, but I don't really have the positioning issue. And it basically works the same way. I have a show and hide. I have a show on the, on the mouse over, a hide on the on mouse out. Again, I could play with the positioning of the second you are uh, the second uh, list if I wanted to have the sub menu right underneath it. All right. But this basically does the same thing by showing and hiding those things. The last one is kind of a fun example and this actually has um, this actually has um, some sound built into it. It's time for Wheel of Fortune. All right. If I click on the wheel, it spins a wheel. Ooh, $750. Are there any S's? If you notice, when you play with this, it's, it doesn't go around the same number of times each time. You sort of have to believe me on that, but it doesn't. 
there's no pattern to it. It might come up with one thing one time, one thing another. Let's see how this is put together, just real quickly. And I'll make it available and you can review it and see if you have any questions about it. This actually uses some JavaScript animation, all right? So I didn't do all the animation myself. I used this, uh, it's called Tween Max and Timeline Max. It's a product uh, that's created. So I use a library to do this. One thing that you'll notice uh, in web development is oftentimes you can find libraries that help you do some things. Probably the most famous library uh, related to JavaScript is called jQuery. What is jQuery? It's a library that um, does some neat things that you don't have to code everything from scratch. All right. Let's look up jQuery real quick. So I know we're running out of time here. You can do what's called like an accordion. Notice as I click on this, Oh, I click on this, the second section shows and the first section hides. I click on section three. The code to do this is actually very, very, very simple. There's your three sections in HTML. And you load this library, these libraries, these jQuery libraries, and you simply add a little snippet of a jQuery command jQuery is, is a library that's built on top of JavaScript, so you can mix JavaScript and jQuery stuff, and it works just fine. But all that does is it makes this thing an accordion. So you can, you can do that real nifty. Well, this is a, an, a, an example of an animation library. And what this accomplishes is a rotating of the image. So I have a on mouse down start spin, which doesn't do anything, on mouse up, spin. So in other words, when I'm looking at this example, and one of these days I'll leave my browser window open, I press down on the mouse, nothing happens until I lift up. All right. I think I was playing with this, and that's why I have an on mouse down function, start spin. But that function doesn't do anything, so I could get rid of it. See, there it just spun a very little bit. Now, how does the spinning work? Well, I find a thing on the page called WOF, Wheel of Fortune. I actually look to see where the mouse is clicked, believe it or not. I then do a little arithmetic to sort of get the mouse position, and then I create a random rotation, all right? And then I tell the library to go and do its thing, to rotate that. Now again, I don't expect you necessarily to understand this, but notice that there's not a lot of code to do this animation, because most of the code that actually does the work is in the library. So one thing that you should look at if you're looking to implement an effect in JavaScript is see if it's something that's available in jQuery or other libraries. The other thing that's neat, which we can't hear because the speaker's off, let me try turning the speaker up, is you actually get the wheel sound. And boom, there it goes. I actually know why I do the math now. I do the math so that it spins as long as the, as the sound thing uh, closes. There's a little bit of trickery here. No matter how fast it spins, it always takes the same amount of time for it to go through, and it always finishes when the sound clip finishes. All right, uh, are there any questions about either anything I saw uh, you see in JavaScript or anything for the project or other assignments?
Yes. So the percentage for widths, that's the percentage of the screen rate. It's this percentage of available space. So if it is, if I have a HTML tag with a body tag, and inside the body tag I have a header. So the header's inside the body tag. Then if I set the width as a percentage, it would be the percentage of the whole screen. If, however, I had a paragraph inside of a section, and I made the section 50%, and I made the paragraph 70%, it would be 70% of the 50%, if that makes sense. Okay. So it's a percentage of the space that is available to that element. All right. Other questions? All right, we'll see you over in land. Turn the light on on the way out. 